For a long time now, there have only been two games in town if you wanted discrete graphics for your PC, AMD or Nvidia. Or went out for 3DFX. But that's changing as the first systems with another discrete option are now on the market. I'm talking about Intel's new Iris XE Max lineup. That's right, that's how it's pronounced, and that's right. The company most known for strapping integrated graphics to their CPUs and calling it a day has now branched out to challenge not only AMD in another industry segment, but now Nvidia in a space that they've long dominated. But let's be clear, XE Max is only a starting point for Team Blue, not a total game changer. Instead of a beefy GPU that's meant to rival the RTX 3080 or the RX 6800 XT, Intel's first discrete offering is a mobile GPU meant primarily for thin and light notebooks. But why? The answer is that the chip is being marketed much more toward content creators than gamers. Don't get me wrong, you can game on the XE Max with more aplomb than you could with mobile iGPUs, as Intel is touting frame rates between 30 and 45 frames per second in modern, graphically intense titles at 1080p, albeit at low to medium settings. You see, although the XE Max is indeed a chip specifically made to be a GPU and not some kind of CPU Intel just repurposed, it has a rather small die, which definitely puts a cap on how much it can actually do for gamers. And unlike other solutions we've seen where an integrated GPU can work with a discrete chip to render the same frame more quickly, like what we saw with Radeon Dual Graphics, XE Max can't do this with the main CPU, which further limits its appeal as a gaming platform. But things should be more interesting on the content creation side. XE Max supports machine learning to speed up rendering tasks, and although we just stated that XE Max can't team up with the iGPU to work on the same frame, the built-in AI can delegate separate tasks to the integrated and discrete GPUs more effectively, which could be helpful for editors trying to process multiple video clips at the same time, for example. Obviously, this isn't as good as getting your work done on a desktop editing rig with dual slot GPUs, but it's not meant to be. One key benefit that Intel is heavily trying to get across to its consumers is how its dynamic power sharing can more efficiently allocate power between the CPU, the discrete GPU, and integrated graphics. Though exactly how much battery you'll save will probably depend a lot on your workload. To be fair to Intel though, they are using low power VRAM for additional battery savings, and early reviews indicate that XE Max looks like a significant step up in performance from a typical iGPU for content creators, even if you just leave the laptop plugged in. However, given the obvious limitations of the chip, it's probably not going to blow you away, as those who need to do serious content creation on the road can always just bring along a laptop with more powerful internals plus an AC adapter, unless they're fighting serious size and weight limitations. But this is still an important first step for Intel, as it's set to release an actual gaming graphics card with modern features like ray tracing support sometime in 2021. And with Intel saying that XE Max rivals entry-level solutions from Nvidia for gaming and beats them in certain rendering tasks, it'll be interesting to see if they can hold their own against existing high-end desktop parts. Assuming, of course, people can even get their hands on one without buying it from some eBay scalper. Check out MSI's MAG27 4QRF QD. It's a 27 inch gaming monitor featuring 1440p resolution, a rapid IPS panel with a one millisecond response time and a 165 Hertz refresh rate on a panel with quantum dot technology for color enhancement. It features G-Sync support to cut down on screen tearing and a height adjustable arm, making it a comfortable and accurate solution if you're into esports titles. Check it out today at the link below. So thanks for watching guys, if you like this video, like it, why not hit subscribe and be sure to hit us up in the comments section with your suggestions for topics that we should cover in the future.